Sweater with Kathleen Dames. Over our 12 episode season, I will share some of my best sweater knitting techniques with you while we knit a sweater together. Hello, my friends, and welcome to episode six. Oh my goodness, we're on the second hand. Yay! And we are reaching the end of the body. I know it's a lot of knitting, right? I mean, it's because you're knitting seamlessly, you're knitting the entire body of the sweater and um, that's a lot of knitting, but it's totally worth it. I hope you're having fun. I hope you've gotten through the increases and that you've started your V-neck decreases. I have done all but one of my V-neck decreases and I am getting ready to do the last one and then it will be time to separate the underarm stitches, which will be in this range, and uh, put them on waist yarn and set this whole thing aside and knit our second sleeve. So I thought I would knit this last row with you guys. And um, <laughs> I have it set up so that once you do your last decrease, uh, I'm sorry, it won't be your last V-neck decrease, but it will be the last one we do before separating. And then we will do the separation on the wrong side row. And I'm about to slip, slip, <clears throat> switch yarn and knit. And the reason I do it on the way back is just so that you're not distracted while you're trying to do your V-neck decrease and then also work out um, which stitches you're going to need to set aside for the underarms. So you could do it on that last right side row, but I think you're better off just waiting, doing it on the wrong side row, finishing up that row, and then you'll be ready to join everything together on a right side row. How did the V-neck go so far? Did you get all of your buttonholes in the right spot and then start the V-neck shaping? I start the V-neck shaping below the underarm split because we want that sort of lower V-neck. You could certainly hold off on doing the V-neck shaping. You could certainly hold off on doing the V-neck shaping if you want it a little higher, but you don't want to forget it and you will need to make some adjustments for that. Um, so let's stick with our V-neck. You can always wear a nice um, tank top or t-shirt underneath to give you a little more modesty, but you still get that V uh, shape that really brings the attention back up to your face. Okay, so we've done our, our last, our seventh uh, V neck decrease and on the way back we are going to uh, follow your numbers in the pattern to slip, to work the stitches and then put them on waist yarn. And you'll notice that the first set of stitches don't match the last set of stitches, even though, of course, the sweater is symmetrical. But that's because we will work our first side of stitches, then we will work the underarm, then we will slip those stitches that were just worked for the underarm onto a separate piece of waist yarn. And that way we will move the yarn over to keep going along the back. Otherwise, if we worked just the front and then held those underarm stitches, the working yarn would be back at the front, at the, um, the edge of the front. So this way we're gonna just keep going, keep the yarn going all the way around. So you'll work past, we'll work to the end of those underarm stitches, put them on waist yarn, keep going on the back and on the second underarm, put those underarm stitches on waist yarn and then finish up. And then you're all set. You don't break the yarn here because we want to keep going on that nice, um, edge that we've got going along the garter stitch button bands and the yarn will just be waiting for you. So if you are <clears throat> working from two skeins like me, you may need to work your second sleeve from the inside of the skein. So if you do want to break one of the strands of yarn, if you're alternating, you're going to want to break the one that is on the inside of the button band, not the one that is at the very edge of the sweater because it's easier to join that in there at where we've been changing on the inner edge of the button band. So once you've worked your body, set aside the underarm stitches and set that aside, you're gonna be ready to knit your second sleeve. And hopefully <clears throat> you're happy with the gauge, everything worked out, and the first sleeve is exactly the way you want it to be. 
I'm not sure that's how it's going to be with mine. Um, as you may remember, I forgot that I was getting a different row gauge and I just followed the directions exactly as written in the pattern for my first sleeve. So I'm thinking I'm going to block the sleeve and the body and see what I think. And then I may end up having to re-knit the sleeve, but at least I'm not re-knitting the entire thing. So uh, you will need to knit your second sleeve and we'll talk about that next time. And also in regards to the sleeves, you may have just, or the first sleeve, you may have just set that aside on a spare needle, on an extra cable, or just one piece of waist yarn. Or you may have gotten yourself all ready and you have the middle stitches on a piece of waist yarn or needle and then you have set up, set aside the beginning and the end stitches for the underarm. And so this is a good time to triple check that you have the correct number of stitches for your underarms and that they match the number of stitches that you have uh, set aside for on the body for the underarms. So. What I realized is one thing I didn't do that I talked about doing is I didn't actually hold it up <laughs> and um, to myself. And of course, I'm already halfway through, but I can still hold it up to my underarm. And I know that there'll be a little, you know, it doesn't have to be right up in the armpit, but you want it to be pretty close. And I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to block it, I think, just to be sure that it's long enough. Um, and I'm going to do that before I set aside my underarm stitches. So just to be sure, just to make sure the fit is exactly what I'm looking for. But you do definitely want to hold it up. Make sure it's long enough um, because now is the time. After this, we're going to set stitches aside and we're going to be doing the yoke. And everything goes pretty quickly in the yoke. Um, there's action on every other row and that's actually a lot of fun. It's my favorite part. But we want to make sure that we are exactly where we thought we would be. So I thought we would work the last wrong side row of the body together. That way you can see how I slip the stitches and what I'm talking about. I went ahead and marked the stitches that I need to work to so that I wouldn't have to count while I'm talking to you. So here we are at the end of the button band. I'm working the wrong side row, so now I'm going to be purling. And I have two markers. This shows you where the underarm stitches are going to be held. And so I'm going to knit to the second one. And then I'll know exactly which stitches to slip onto waist yarn for the underarm. You probably don't need to do this. You can just count the stitches, but if you know you're going to be um, doing this <laughs> in public or, or, you know, at midnight, you may want to set yourself up in advance so you don't have to worry about counting while you're having a conversation <laughs> or just um, for whatever reason works for you. All right, we're getting there. Oh, so many pearls. I was talking with uh, lots of the folks that I chat with on Periscope and we were talking about learning to knit and learning to purl. And my friend Lynn didn't learn to purl until 20 years after she'd learned how to knit. So as a general rule, she avoids purling whenever she can. And I am lucky enough that my friend Emily, when she taught me how to knit, she taught me how to knit and purl basically in the same session. And the first thing I ever, my first actual project was a knit one, purl one scarf. It was not a pretty scarf. I no longer have it, but there, I've just knit the first stitch of the underarm section. And I'm about, and I we just have a few more stitches to go. But anyway, learning to knit and purl at the same time means that I really don't have a problem doing either one. I generally favor knitting. It's a little bit easier for me, but it's really not that different. And as you can see, I am a thrower. Uh, and I actually let go of the needle every time with my right hand and bring the yarn around. Okay, so now here I've come to my last stitch. And the great thing about the removable stitch markers is they're tiny and they don't really get in the way because they are on the stitch itself. Okay, so now I have knit my underarm. I'm gonna turn it back this way. 
<laughs> I have prepared some waste yarn on a tapestry needle and we're just going to slip off the stitches to the waste yarn. You've seen me do this before. I did it in a previous episode. Okay, so I've got almost all of my stitches. Three, two, one. Now, I just pull the yarn all the way through, slip off the needle, and I just tie a gentle slip knot here on the end just to make sure that nobody's going anywhere. These stitches have to sit around for a little while before we get to the point where we'll weave them together with Kitchener stitch. But as you can see, there are my underarm stitches held by this lovely piece of waist yarn. And my working yarn whoop, got wrapped around the needle but is over here ready for me to start purling again for the back portion. And I'll do the same thing again. I will knit all the back stitches, sorry, purl all the back stitches and the underarm stitches and then I will slip the underarm stitches to some waist yarn as well. And then I will finish up the row and we will be all done with the body and ready to move on to the sleeve. But I thought as long as I had you here and I had a little extra time, I'd talk for a moment about buttons. And I'm going to be using these gorgeous ceramic buttons from my friend Natalie at Remembrance's Pottery. And the great thing about Natalie's buttons, and something that you may not find with all ceramic buttons, is that they are glazed on both the front and the back. Sometimes um, potters will only glaze the front of a button because that's the part that's seen. But when the back is unglazed, sometimes it can be a little rough and it can abrade your yarn. And so I was really appreciative uh, when I found out that Natalie's buttons are glazed on both sides. And what a perfect color match. Aren't they just great? And this is totally, total, just total luck uh, that these all came together. But as you can see, the great thing about having done the buttonholes already is that I can tell oh, that this is going to be such a pretty sweater with these special handmade buttons. When you are looking for buttons for your sweater, I highly recommend checking out beautiful potters on places like Etsy, like Natalie, and she's Remembrances Pottery. Um, or other, there are plenty of great button vendors there on Etsy, or check out your local yarn store. They usually stock buttons. And of course, fabric and sewing stores and notion stores like M&J Trimming um, here in New York City. Mood Fabrics has a great button selection. There are plenty of great places you can find buttons. Antique stores, I've found some great vintage buttons here and there, uh, but do, be careful that you get buttons that will fit uh, through your buttonholes. So that's the other reason to do the buttonholes on your swatch because remember then you can take your swatch with you, keep it in your purse, keep your knitting wherever you keep it, um, but you can always be on the hunt for some buttons. So one other cool thing about doing the buttonholes on both sides if you're doing it that way is that you can do uh, you can do removable buttons. You can sew your special button to another button with a little shank of thread between, kind of like a cuff link. If you've ever seen those um, knot cuff links, sometimes it's like two balls um, tied, tied together by some other yarn. And so we can use those on a sweater like this if we don't sew the buttons on. Let's say you fall in love with a button that's absolutely perfect, but it's too big for that buttonhole. Well, just sew it, make this shank, sew it to a button that does fit through the buttonhole, and then you can just put the buttons, the back button, through huh, both of your buttonholes. I can't quite show you that here right now, but um, it really works out just like a cuff link. And that also means if you fall in love with a button that's really not washable, I've mentioned this before, but let's say you fall for this gorgeous wooden button or something in leather, and you know you're going to want to wash your sweater, but you're not going to want to remove the buttons every time and then sew them back on, right? So sew them to what we call a backer button and that gives you the option to remove it when you're ready to sew. Also, you could sew 
a set of one kind of buttons to a set of a different kind of buttons or a mixed set and then you have the option to change the look of the sweater every time you wear it. So the two buttonholes on the button bands gives you the option to play around with things and change things up. I think that's pretty fun. So I think that's everything for today. We are pretty much finished with the body, which is exciting, and we're gonna get ready to do another sleeve. And we'll talk more about sleeves next time. We can sort of revisit uh, increases and anything else, else that comes up. Maybe I'll show you how to shank those buttons together. That might be a great option for you. Um, until then, I hope you're having a great time with the sweater. Thanks so much for being a part of this, and happy knitting. Bye. This is season one of The Sweater, and we are knitting the Solstice Cardi together. Many thanks to Karen at Roundtable Yarns, Natalie at Remembrances Pottery, Corinna at Picnic Knits, Tara Swiger and my fellow Starship Captains, and you for being part of this knitting adventure. Don't forget to visit kathleennames.com slash the sweater to sign up for the newsletter before March 25th and get your free copy of the Solstice Cardi pattern in the welcome email. Is it after March 25th? Purchase your copy of the Solstice Cardi from my Ravelry shop. And be sure to share your project on social media using the hashtags KDSweater and Solstice Cardi. Questions? Comments? Just want to share your progress? Visit the Kathleen Dames Design Ravelry forum for support and camaraderie. Thanks so much for joining me, and happy knitting!